I just got back last night from Las Vegas, happened to be there while the Las Vegas Golden Knights happened to win a Stanley Cup in their sixth season. I was at a bar full of Vegas fans and I was jealous. <laughs> like genuinely, that was my main feeling. It was fun. It was exciting. And then at the end, I was just jealous. And guess what? They were in the league for six years, but the Vancouver Canucks will be feeling the effects of this Oliver Ekman Larson buyout for another eight. That's right. The Canucks are buying out Oliver Ekman Larson. The source comes to you from none other than Elliot Friedman. There is word this afternoon. The Vancouver will buy out Oliver Ekman Larson. He'll be an unrestricted free agent, which is a little bit surprising. It's something that's been discussed at length ad nauseum, but uh, let's go over it because Oliver Ekman Larson hasn't been good for the Canucks, right? Uh, I mean, you know, you look at the points, oh, 22 and 54, that sounds fine, but this minus 24 is really doing some heavy lifting. And just in general, Oliver Ekman Larson is is slow. Uh, he, he, he just doesn't seem to have it anymore. However, there was some optimism coming into this offseason. Hey, Rick Tockett's the coach. He likes Rick Tockett. They've played. They've been together before. He did his best seasons. Uh, some of them were under Rick Tockett. Maybe that will get him to become more like the player he was before. He has a full season to train. He seemed a little bit reinvigorated. But obviously that doesn't matter anymore. So the Canucks are buying him out. Now, what does that mean? Well, why are the Canucks buying him out to start with? Uh, it's mainly because of this. The Canucks have no cap space coming into next season. LTIR allows them to to do some work and and get you know get some cap space. But if you look at who they have on the roster, I mean they have twelve forwards on the roster, including an RFA Vitali Kravtsov who probably isn't coming back. They have five defensemen on the roster. They have one goaltender uh, that is really NHL caliber. They have, they have to make some moves. They have to make some signings at free agency this year to just at least fill in the gaps, maybe some trades, maybe get rid of a winger. That was sort of the way that people thought they would create that cap space, would be dumping a winger. But instead, they go the buyout route. So let's pull up the old buyout calculator. Keep in mind, by the way, remember this trade? Remember this trade that happened? Remember my reaction to it? If you go back, what was this, two years ago, almost to the day, two or just under you know, uh, 23 months ago, uh, go, back to my, go back to my video on that. Uh, maybe I'll put it up here. Uh, my reaction wasn't good. Uh, so all the people who were saying, oh, yeah, but Connor Garland's great. Oh, yeah, he'll be, he'll be good again. Uh, no, no, it, it didn't happen. It was an awful trade because now the Canucks are like, might be trading Connor Garland for assets and they have now bought it all over Ekman Larson. And by the way, they got rid of uh, a player who looks, who's, uh, or the number nine overall pick who turned into Dylan Gunther, who looks like he might be a heck of a hockey player. So let's go to the buyout calculator. What the Canucks were going to have to deal with uh, was this cap hit, essentially on the left here. 2023-2024 uh, for four more seasons. So the next four years, 8.25 cap hit. Um, Arizona was retaining 12% of that. So the cap hit was actually $7.26 million for the next four seasons. That's a lot, right? Now, the way buyouts work, if you aren't familiar, is uh, in the offseason, you can buy players out. You can only buy out, I think, two or maybe three. Uh, there's, there's like certain limitations. I'm not super familiar with them, but basically there's this thing called a buyout ratio. Basically, if you buy somebody out, you still owe them two thirds of the remaining money of their contract. So OEL does miss out on a third of his remaining contract for double the length. So he had four years left and he had, I guess about $29 million left in salary. So the Canucks now have to pay him two thirds of that, about $19.3 million dollars over the next eight years instead of the next four. Now, Arizona is on the hook for 12%. So they will still have to, Arizona now has to pay him, him 12%, although they were paying 12% of that money. Like they, it's good for Arizona, really. I mean, it, it means that they're, they get sort of stretched out an extra 300K for four years, but I'm sure they don't care. So instead of basically paying him 29 real dollars, 29 million real dollars, um, instead, uh, of that, they have to pay him uh, 19.333, but the actual cap hit also gets split up into two thirds. So that $33 million of cap hit now has to get split across Vancouver and Calgary. So instead of a cap hit of $8.25 million for the next four years, the Vancouver Canucks have almost all of that cap hit removed this year. They only have to pay him $146,000 this year, which means effectively they just took 
eight million dollars off their cap they now have a lot of room to do something this year right they can go get a couple defensemen now they have to fill the hole that he will leave but that's probably like a one and a half two million dollar hole not a 8.25 million dollar hole so maybe they go replace him they pay a guy two and a half million dollars and now they're in the in the hole for 2.7 million this year instead of 8.25 and they can use that other five and a half million to go do something with However, where it gets a little tricky is in the future, right? Next year, 2.346. So $6 million essentially off the cap next year. Great. Then year three, $4.766 million. Okay, so they're saving, you know, they're saving a, a couple mil, about $3 million there. And then the following year, I guess three and a half. The following year, again, that's still 4.7666 million. Again, saving three and a half. Keep in mind, you don't have the player anymore, right? Uh and then that's where that other contract would have ended. However, the last four years, 2027 through 2031, the Canucks will now have to pay Oliver Ekman Larson's, or at least have the cap hit of Oliver Ekman Larson of $2.126 million for those four years. Now, if you're the Vancouver Canucks and your thought is, we want to win the Stanley Cup in the next four years, then this is fine. Because who cares about this in the future, right? And the cap's going to go up, but... This is something that is going to just be on the Canucks books for the next, for, for eight years now, right? It's fantastic value this year and next year. Years three and four, I mean, it's not great value, but you are getting some money off the cap. Um, but then these last four years are where it hurts. So from a long-term perspective, it, it hurts. However, if your thought is Oliver Ekman Larson has literally zero value, so we can take a third of his contract out and spread the rest over... Maybe it ends up being worth it. My fear is the Canucks stay in mediocrity land for the next few years, and maybe they're gearing up. They're gearing up 2028. They're finally pushing for a Stanley Cup. $2 million matters at that point, because if you think about a deadline acquisition, right? If you're paying this $2 million over the course of the season and you want to go acquire a guy at the deadline, well, you can go acquire a guy who has like a $5 million cap hit with if you save $2 million all year, right? That could be a big, big piece in a playoff push that the Canucks uh, will not have the luxury potentially of going towards. Now, again, spe it's speculation, right? Like, like maybe this doesn't matter that much, but, and, and maybe the, the amazing savings they get from this year, maybe it makes it worth it. I just kind of doubt it because are the Canucks contending this year, right? If they're thinking, okay, making this move help allows us to keep Connor Garland and not lose him for nothing. Maybe that's the thought process behind it. Um, but if they just waited, let's let's just throw 2024 in here, right? Let's say they waited a year, right? So they don't get the, the cap savings this year, but basically they get a little bit less savings net, or they, they save a little bit more next year. They still have those two bad years, but then they only have three years of a much smaller cap hit after that, right? So if they were just able to stomach it for this year and buy them out next year, suddenly it's it's really not so bad. Or even if they waited two years, right? Maybe they're able to, because again, they're not winning the Stanley Cup in the next two years, most likely. Maybe they wait two years and then, well, it's not that bad, right? Like we're just talking, you know, 4.18 instead of 8.25 and then 1.5 extra on the cap for only two extra years. They're out of it in 2029. So it's a little weird to me. Uh, I didn't think it was going to go this way, but it's the way the Canucks have seemed to go on. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Um... Yeah, it, 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 it's a surprising one, uh, and I, I'm not the biggest fan of it. Anyways, uh, enjoy your summer, and uh, I'll talk to you at the draft.